Okay, so here we have our frames, both playing forward and then playing backwards. And then it's set to the default delay of 20, 20 in increments of one one hundredth of a second. So it's 20 one hundredths of a second. So two tenths of a second, or put another way in the way Photoshop does it, 0.2 seconds. Each frame is lasting 0.2 seconds. So that gives you five frames in a second. So this is a five frame per second animation. Let's make a GIF. It's, we're leaving the loop count empty. All of you should do that, so it plays through forever. But you can encode into a GIF that it only plays three times, or it only plays once, or it only plays seven times. And then there's also using the global color map that uses the same 256 pixels for all frames. And that will reduce your memory a lot, but it will also reduce your quality. So don't use that. And then you also have an effect of cross-fading your frames. So this is what it looks like not cross-faded. And this is what I want for this animation. It kind of depends on your animation. I don't need a lot of massaging between the frames. What I need is different timing. So I like the flame transition. I think that timing's great, but the panting is a little fast. So if I want to slow down the panting, I can change it from 0.2 seconds to 0.3 seconds, which is my usual default. And that's going to be 30 one hundredths of a second, which is closer to three frames per second. And then maybe it starts to speed up. Like maybe this I do 25. And then this would be, which would be 0.25 frames per second. And then it goes to 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And then here I want to slow these down at the end to 30, 30, 30 as his breath kind of calms down after being set ablaze. In fact, I might even want to change it to 40 for these first two. But not this last one. And the reason not the last one, the last one I'm only going to do 10. Because that's going to add to the first one, because those are the exact same frame. All right, now I'm going to say make a gift, and it will output my new timing. So let's see if it slowed down the panting. It did. Ah, that's a little bit better. All right, I'm liking the timing of the panting, but maybe everything's just a little bit so let's see, a little bit too fast. So if, I'm going to show you do global timing. So I'm going to say my default should actually be more like 25 for everything. Why didn't it do it? Maybe because I, oh, there we go. So now everything's 26. I'm going to move this last one to 10. I'm going to move these to 40. Maybe even a little bit slower, maybe 45. 45. 40. 35. I'm going to start it at 35. Forty. Forty. It's always good to start slow and speed up. Thirty-five. Thirty. 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 Okay. So you can mess with your timing as much as you want. And I do like that flame transition. 
Now, if I want to stay on the cat a little bit longer, because I stay on the dog for quite a while, I didn't animate the cat panting or moving. So all I need to do is lengthen that amount of time when it's just the cat, because it's going by very fast. So I find just the cat frame, and I actually have two of them. So I'm going to make, make one of them 40 and the other one 40. Let's see how that feels. And if I want to make them a lot longer than that, I can. And then I'll show you what cross-fading frames does. So now we hover on the cat just a little bit longer. I think that works. Okay, cross-fading. Let me save this first because I'm happy with this. I hit save. Takes a few seconds. It's going to go to downloads. And it's going to be named after this website, easygift.com. So I'm going to move that out to my desktop. And I need to save it with my own name. So this is... Spring 2023, Carl, Assignment 3, and it's a GIF, a GIF, but I don't put the, the GIF in. I let it be there. And then I can test it by opening it in Safari or in Chrome in any web browser. And that timing should stay just like the preview. And you'll see it at full resolution. It takes quite a few clicks in to actually see the pixels because 8 by 8 by 100 is a pretty good resolution for screen, which is the minimum is 72 pixels per inch. And it's amazing how well that fire works. Remember, all I did is just rotate it and move it a little bit each time. Okay. So now to see some of these option, these other things, we can try cross-fading. A fader delay would be, well, let's just see what this does. That seems like a lot of frames. Oh, and it's only allowed for up to 30 frames. So what cross-fading does is it will build in-betweens between your frames where it fades them into each other. But the problem is it tends to always go towards low opacity. So you'll, like it's a slideshow, basically. So it will go from one full opacity image to something that looks lower opacity than either image back to the next full opacity image. So it gives you this kind of strobe effect. And there's only limited ways that that can be helpful. But it's nice that it gives you that option. Once you've saved it as a GIF, you are good. You know how you got there. You can try things like make a GIF and then optimizing it. And what that does is it just saves memory where it can. Oh, it does give you an option for reversing it. Run to the end and reverse back to the start. Yeah, so instead of doing all of that full copy, I thought that was probably there. If you output the GIF and then you check this option, it will create it for you. Where it will run through and then flip. So use the tool to its utmost, especially because it's free. And now because it's going to run forward, it's still running forward. And now it's going to run backwards. You see how the timing on the dog slightly changed. That just makes it a little bit more complicated. But it also makes it a lot more frames. So if I now save this one, I'll show you the difference between them. So this actually adds reverse to the name. And that's not going to be the one I saved just because it has more frames than I need. Because I already, I already created my my reverse. There it is. So let's see how much. That is 13 megabytes. And then this one 
It actually might be the exact same size. Nope, it's about twice the size, so that makes sense. It's about 7.4 megabytes. It just depends how they code it. So I'm going to keep the one that, that didn't build in an extra reverse. But if you want an easy set to reset just by playing it in reverse, you don't have to do what I did and re, you know number all of them again. You can output it and then say optimize, and then you can click on the reverse option. Okay, once it's saved, you're good. You can leave this, and we can post the GIF animation. Remember, you don't need the animatic, so I'm actually going to take that out. And I'm going to call this final GIF animation. And it's no longer a test. And I'm going to just do the usual upload image and drag that GIF in. And it will automatically play within the browser with the timings that I set up. That's the beauty of GIFs. All they need is an internet browser and to know how to play the animation. And they take up so little memory. And because they're 8 by 8 inches at 100 pixels per inch, I don't even need to shrink it within Canvas. It's already kind of the perfect screen size. All right. It's composed within that square. That's good. We need one more component. We need the refined storyboard. So to do that, we go back to our stage in Photopea, and we're going to save this as something else. So file, I'm going to say save more, save PSD, it's 14.7 megabytes. Why is it more memory than the GIF, which has those same images at the same size? It's because this supports millions of colors. GIFs reduce images down to only 256 colors per image. And if you optimize it so it only uses 256 pixel colors throughout all of your frames, it would be even less. So I've saved it. It's got a different name. So I need to change that name now from stage. So I don't want to lose that stage file to refined storyboard. Do it all in capitals so you can see it. Move that out to my desktop. Now I'm going to close Photo P and then open Photo P because we know we need to rename it and then bring it in so that it saves to that place. So now this is the refined storyboard. Just a duplicate to my stage. What I'm going to do is use my move tool and use my rulers. If you don't see the rulers, hit Command R so that you see them. And I'm going to drag guides onto each side, they'll snap to the sides of my square. But I want them right on the edge. All right, now I'm gonna grow my canvas size because I need to spread this out to look a lot like my storyboard sketch. Three by three frames for nine images total that tell the whole story of my animation. You're allowed to do more, but you need at least nine. And I think it's a better creative challenge and makes for a better print portfolio if you only have nine. So I'm going to go to image canvas size. This is teaching us how to do layout within Photopea. And Photoshop and Photopea are not good at laying things out at measurements. What they are good at is growing things from the center. So I'm going to change it from 8 by 8 inches. I'm going to make the canvas, the space behind it, 30 inches by 40 inches. And if that sounds familiar, that's because that's the dimension of the largest paper you can print on in a professional four-color offset lithography press. That's also the dimensions we used for our like working space, for our collages and compositing. I'm going to grow it from the center. What this does is this actually makes our image, which is a square, 
which I should crop 